Hi guys, welcome back to another countersign video. The original intention for this video is to cover how to pick a leader. But since it's a little too short, I've decided to also cover the next topic, field of battle, in this video as well. If you don't know what I'm talking about, check this video out and you'll see why this all makes sense. So grab a coffee, sit back, relax, and let's go. Today, we're going to first talk about picking the right leader for your PvP team. Why do you want to give a unit the leader role? There are actually three benefits. Number one, one deployment cost reduction. Now, reducing one cost might not sound like a significant amount, but in a fast and high octane gauntlet match, having that reduced cost will allow you to gain the initiative, triggering skills before others can. It also makes units much more expandable. Any two cost unit that has its cost reduced to one can be spammed whenever, making it an extra unit that's on the field for the enemy to deal with. The second benefit is having it in your starting hand. In every team, there are core units that it's built upon. Imagine not having them for a very, very long time. You are forced to play in a way that you didn't plan for, and most of the time you just lose the game. So an example would be like an Awakened Hill or a Maria Antonov. They lose their purpose if they are not deployed early. The third benefit is for strategic reasons. Since team leaders are exposed in a loading screen, when you queue for PvP, you can use it as a scare tactic. That's... probably it. I know this reason is a little short, but... I wanted to have three key points. So who you pick as a leader should always be the one you want to deploy early. Sometimes not necessarily the highest cost. Oh, before I forget, I have a big surprise for the next and final topic of this series. If you haven't, hit the subscribe button because I know for sure you don't want to miss this. Moving on to our next topic, Field of Battle. This is a little bit more interesting because in every gauntlet fight, we are only allowed to deploy in a limited space if you didn't realize. The space increases as the enemy ship's health drops. Ever wondered why some people just wait and refuse to begin dropping units in a gauntlet battle? Well, not because they're AFK. Here's why. To make things simple, it is generally less advantage to be fighting in the enemy side of the field before you are allowed to deploy it in the restricted area. For example, if your units are pushed deep into the enemy side, in order to continue to bolster the front, your reinforcements will have to walk into range and they may not be in a very desirable position. But there are units that are able to bypass this restriction, and these are Elizabeth, Kang Su Yong, Ju Shi Yun, Assault Trooper, Ingrid, and this one's a little bit of a low key, uh, Awaken Yumina. These are the units that you can use to distract the enemy when they are sat comfortably behind the back lines doing what they do. With a bit of timing, you can really screw the enemy team over. Like forcing Kyle to do a reverse bulwark, or baiting Rosara into using her special skill backwards. Sometimes these units can also be used to outright delete back lines such as snipers and rangers. You'd want to use Ingrid against rangers and Kang or Elizabeth against snipers. If built properly, they should die upon deployment. Ultimately, if you can control the battle, your chances of winning becomes that much higher. And that's it for this video today. I hope there isn't too much to digest. Remember that with knowledge comes power, with power comes... I'll see you in the next video. Bye.